Well, I guess we'll just get right into it. If you want to start out by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, my name is Raven Hayward. I'm a senior at MLO. I've been there since freshman year. I plan on going to UNC Chapel Hill next year to major in business. And the way that I found out that I wanted to pursue business was actually through the capstone project that we have at MLO, as well as joining FBLA and through various summer camps that I've been able to participate in. I did Youth About Business summer camp, which is connected through, well, at the time it was connected through um, Columbia. And pretty much with that is where we were able to meet with different executives who did like mergers and acquisitions and educated us about um, like the stock market and just what all entails in business. And I actually did the capstone project part of AP research where from that business camp, I wanted to research um, how companies' DEI policies were affecting specifically women of color, because I noticed that through meeting with these different executives and the different HR roles that they had, as well as like the financial roles in the C-suite, I wasn't seeing as many women who um, necessarily um, looked like me or that looked like any of the other girls of color that were participating in that camp. And I just kind of wanted to see where that disconnect was and why we weren't seeing as many women of color in these specific roles because representation is definitely very really important. And especially with our generation as Generation Z, you know, we're starting to speak up more about the issues that we're noticing and we want to see change. So that brought about me actually starting my podcast, Diversify Her. It'll be a year in June, so next month, of me having my podcast. And pretty much with that, I just want to have a platform where I can have open conversation, open dialect, where just educating myself as well as the listeners to really understanding the different stories of people that I'm meeting with, maybe hearing more about their particular jobs and maybe seeking out mentorship opportunities. And through my podcast, you know, it's been a great learning experience. I'm really grateful that I was even able to have it. I've met a lot of people, I've gained a lot of mentors, and just being able to have that conversation, I feel, is the first step to me seeing the change in, like, my vision as I enter in the workforce in the communities. So are you hoping with your podcast, I guess we could get into that, are you hoping to spread knowledge about DEI or what is what is your goal with that aside yeah. from doing it for the capstone project uh, well actually the capstone project is kind of what made me want to start it but i didn't start it because of the capstone project i guess just with my research and after i did my research and saw like really what the problems were and understanding that it's just about just having more representation and just having more education out there that led me to wanting to start my podcast because not only would I be able to learn for myself, but it could also be on a platform to where anyone else who wanted to listen along with the conversations that I was having, they could learn as well. So with my podcast, yes, it's about educating with DEI, um, which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion and talking about intersectionality. And also um, it's not just centered around DEI as much anymore. I'm definitely meeting with starting to meet with more people that's like closer to my age range and just hearing their personal experiences of maybe you know what their goals and their visions are and really just any inspiration that they could give because in the title diversify her it's just again about diversifying yourself so learning new things being able to experience being able to talk to different people and just get new life lessons i feel um, it's definitely educational and inspirational podcast very cool. So what is the most important thing you've learned about from your interviewees on your podcast about DEI or the corporate world or just in general? I'd say the most important thing that I've learned is definitely the importance of having patience in this work. A lot of the executives or just the people that I've talked with, a lot of them have said that they've been doing this work for like 10 plus years. And the change can be um, little by little. 
and also knowing that with this work it's forever changing and it's also different in every single environment so what may be seen as DEI in one company may be like what one company needs maybe another company needs something di um, different and also with talking about DEI it's not just based on like race at all and just like seeing different people of like different um, backgrounds it's also about being equitable into with lgbtq plus and also with certain hr companies and what certain benefits that workers get and like employee benefits and also just looking at the disabilities that some workers may have so DEI is definitely not just focusing on race, but also all aspects that make people different and then working amongst each other. And I also just had an interview with a lady who's the DEI manager at Discover, which is like the Discover card, like the credit card, and that episode will be coming out hopefully this week or next week. But she actually talked about how with her company, they're trying to be more transparent not internally but also externally so they released like a DEI report that showed um, just everything that their company's been doing and we even went into talking about like the requiring process and like the recruitment process that um, these companies are having so that they can see more representation so not only uh, talking about like what more can be done inside the company but also outside of the company like how are you reaching out how are you gaining more employees what's your process through that so just really looking at all aspects of it. Going back to what got you involved in this whole podcast and everything along with it, have you had any personal experiences or anything like that that influenced your thoughts or opinions or whatever on DEI and everything related to it? I will say I've been a part of the equity team at Enlo since my freshman year. So I will say with just the experiences that I've seen that at our school, Enlo alone has had. I know sometimes, Leah, you might get this, how people say sometimes Enlo is like a school within a school with the difference between like the AP classes and with the honors and also standards because Enlo is like one of the most diverse schools, I believe, in our district because like everyone's coming from all different backgrounds. Like I live in Leesville. I know people who live in Nightdale. I know people who live in Apex and like they all go to Enlo. But sometimes, you know, as we're walking through the hallway, we see like a whole bunch of different kids. And then maybe once you get into the classroom, um, sometimes you can like be confined into a bubble because most of the time, a lot of the classes that you have people with, sometimes a lot of those people are also in your other classes. So it's um, not exactly being able to like experience for like everyone that goes to your school. So I know that's something that we've talked about with just the equity team alone and then I also will say I had like a personal experience that kind of made me question like if I was always feeling the need that I was going to have to prove myself my fresh after my freshman year I did a summer camp at Yale and at that business camp I was placed in a group with two boys that lived in Brazil and then one girl that lived in Spain so their native tongues were Portuguese and Spanish and those languages like they kind of like intermingle. A lot of the words are the same, whether it's Portuguese or Spanish. So working in that group, I was trying to contribute as much as I could, but I, it felt like they weren't listening to me. It felt like they almost thought that I didn't really belong in the group. I didn't really belong in the camp. So through that, I was like, oh man, am I gonna always feel like the need to prove myself? And then also with Enlo, sometimes like the academic pressure that we have there. I know a lot of people will talk about like, how many AP classes do you take? Or now it's like, oh, how many hours of sleep are you getting at night? How long are you spending studying? Just like that academic pressure. And then just the pressure that I felt in that group of like, am I always gonna feel the need to prove myself? And then also with the business, you know, it's usually like a male dominated sort of area, also white male dominated area. So bringing my like intersectionality into it, I identify as a young black woman. So just with that aspect of me feeling, am I always gonna have to prove myself? Like, is this something that other women are feeling also? Or like, are there any policies in place that maybe make me more welcoming or like a welcoming environment? So that also led me to wanting to start my podcast just because of personal experiences that I've had, I've definitely wanted to spread more awareness about it and just have more conversations about it. 
Got it. Got it. And yeah, I can definitely understand the academic pressure. Even in just freshman year, these kids are taking Calc AB, ABC and Human Geo and right. all of this. Yeah. So I, I guess now we know that DEI stands for diversity, equity, inclusion, but do you mind just doing a more deep dive in what exactly that means, what that looks like um, with businesses and just like why it's important? Yeah. So to break it down, diversity is talking about just everything that makes people different. And then with equity, it's about giving people what they need. A lot of the time we get confused equity versus equality. So equality is giving everyone like the same thing. But with equity, it's giving people like meeting them with what they need. And I know a lot of the time I go to it's like a picture that you see and it's like a dad and two of his sons and they're standing at a fence and they're trying to look over into like the baseball field and they each have like a box one box to stand on whereas like the dad he's really tall he already has a good view whether he needs the box or not and then there's one son that's standing on the box he can pretty much see well over the box but he still does need a box Um, to look over it and then there's the youngest who only has one box and he's really short and he can't see it all but then so that's showing equality but then looking over to the next picture where you see equity you see that the dad doesn't have a box because he can already see over it but then he has a box or not the second son he has just one box because he could see fine over it with that one box and then the shortest son has two boxes because he needed two boxes in order to see over so it's just giving people what they need so that they can like be met to where they are and then with inclusion it's about making sure everyone feels included and inclusive so being at the table but also having a voice at the table and feeling like your voice is heard and your opinions matter. And in business and just with anything, that's very important because again, with our generation, as we are Generation Z coming into the workforce, these issues are definitely very important as we're seeing now in the media. Um, I definitely know last year, just with the George Floyd and the Breonna Taylor and with the Stop Asian Hate Movement, we definitely were looking more at companies and saying, okay, are you saying anything about this? Like, what are your opinions on this? And then there's also a lot of the time where companies will say they're being supportive of um, being inclusive and being equitable, but there's not really any action behind it. Or sometimes they might just fill the quota of saying, oh, yep, we have this many um, Black employees, this many Asian employees. Yep, we are diverse. But that's just checking off the box. You're just filling a quota. You're not really fulfilling everything that you can be doing to make sure that those workers feel included there, feel inclusive. And just looking into how equitable that company is, those things do matter because looking at it from an HR perspective, not everything in business is just about performance. Performance is definitely an important component in business, but also you want to make sure that your employees are feeling valued there because you want them to stay there, right, in order to continue for that company to be successful. So it's all about just making sure everyone feels, you know, welcome in that environment. And that's what DEI is pretty much about. Do you have any examples, I don't know, of companies that have implemented DEI either like because they weren't doing it already or just they started off that way or anything like that? The example that I gave earlier um, with Discover and their report, they actually have it seen visible. They have it from 2018 going up to 2021. And you can actually see the increase of how many more employees that they have that are in specific races. They specifically have like a component key that's for women of color. I can actually pull up the report right now and send it in the chat but with that I found that very interesting as well I also funny story so when I was doing my interview for Cornell the lady that interviewed me she actually worked for Google and so doing my interview I started talking to her about my podcast and she was like oh my goodness that's actually so impressive you know at my job like at Google with where I work they actually have me like on the equity board for my job. And I was like, oh, so with the equity board at your job, like, are you seeing any improvements there? What exactly like are y'all doing? Like, what does this equity board look like at Google? So she was just telling me how with at her job with Google, they're making more efforts and strides to make sure that their employees feel more inclusive 
and welcome there. So they have like different um, groups there. I know they have some, like certain like African American groups, certain Asian groups, queer groups, um, just at these companies so that they can feel like they have a safe space within the companies. So from that short conversation that I had with her in my interview is where I learned like, okay, so some of these companies, they're not just putting random stuff on their website to make you think, oh yeah, they're doing good. But like, there's actually action behind it where an actual employee can say that they're making a contribution. Got it, got it. Well, that sounds like a great interview and what a perfect one too. So obviously, so I don't know if you know, but our magazine is gonna be focusing on leadership. And so we just wanted to get your opinion. What does like good leadership look for you, whether it be in the corporate world or just be in the world? I feel like with leadership, especially with being having my podcast and then also being on student council at Enlo, I feel like leadership, it's all about service. So being a servant leadership. So again, with one of the reasons why I wanted to put these conversations onto a podcast was just so people around me within my community could also be learning along with me. And I feel like also with being a good leader is of course leading by example and also being a leader, being an active listener and understanding that there's always more to learn. There's always new opportunities that are to be had. So just staying humble again with leadership. And with a lot of the executives that I've been meeting with and just the volunteers on my podcast, I'm also realizing that they didn't have to do that because it's not like I'm paying them or anything to come on to my podcast. So, but that, that also speaks to me that they're presenting leadership because they're like giving back to me and giving me insight. And with some of the questions that I'm asking them, you know, what do you think you, what do you wish you would have done differently if you were at the beginning of this, like giving advice to me, what do you think I should know moving forward? So with a lot of that and just their leadership advice there, again, just taking the initiative to ask those questions, I feel like are very important components of leadership and being a leader. And narrowing it down a bit, are there things maybe that are like different for corporate leadership or like in the corporate world versus like just leadership in general that maybe you have to do more of? I don't know. That's a very good question. I don't know if I can exactly answer that only because I haven't joined the corporate world yet but i will say that through having conversations with these different leaders it's pretty much the same as almost how it is for us in school with leadership you know just taking that initiative understanding you're not always going to get along with all of your co-workers or maybe with all your peers that you have in a class but it's about you know having accountability and having that level of matureness so that you can move on to uh, you know solving the problem i know in one of my interviews that I had to ask one of the women, she brought up microaggressions that she faces in her job because she was an investment banker. And investment bankers, you don't really see a lot of women that are investment bankers. And just like what a microaggression is, is just like a subtle line that could be intentional, maybe not intentional, but that's just um, degrading. So a lot of the times she said that they would often like crack jokes and be like, oh yeah, don't you have to go pick up your kids right now? Like, are you making them dinner or are you just going to go get fast food for them tonight? And just little snarky comments like that in the workplace, which she felt weren't necessarily appropriate, but only because, you know, a lot of those men pretty much had stay at home lives. And so through that, she felt, you know, that wasn't, no, really necessary but she had to like compose herself and say let's just move on or let's just continue working and she said that through that she felt like she I would use that as an example of like leadership with understanding you know how sometimes in certain moments I can make you uncomfortable or may not necessarily like feel okay you have to understand just like internalize it and then just continue moving forward and she said that later on she did go back and address it because she did want those men to know like she didn't appreciate those jokes that she would make sometimes so I would say Wow, that's great. And that's really a great example of being like the bigger person, but I mean, that's hard. And, but then even going back and standing up for them, that's great too. So 
What role do you think diversity plays in having good and responsible leadership? And why is diversity so important to see on company boards or just in companies? So I feel like the role that diversity has in having good leadership correctly, I would say just being a good leader is understanding that sometimes you're leading people that come from different backgrounds. So the elementary school that I went to, I went to A.B. Combs Elementary, and with that, we had these principles that we followed, which were Dr. Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And with that, they were pretty much just like like the pillars that we'd have to do. So like number one was be proactive. Number two was begin with the end in mind and so forth and it went on. And pretty much with that, it just helped you to understand that with being a leader, you have to understand that there's different components that comes with it. And with the aspect of diversity, you know, we're in the 21st century now and we're seeing a lot of progressive movements. So you also have to be cognitive that sometimes people are gonna think differently than you or have different opinions than you. And in leadership, as a leader, you have to be able to take that into consideration to make sure that you're being mindful and considerate for those that you're leading. And with business, I feel that that's important that companies are demonstrating like good leadership than being accepting of diversity because again with your business if you want it to be successful you have to make sure that you're catering to those that you're trying to get business from so again like with your customers and with your employees you have to make sure that you're being respectful and mindful of those differing opinions and those different backgrounds because diversity needs to be celebrated like to be different is to be great you know no one, no, no one's really funny. Like you're all the same. That's why we're all made differently. We all have different opinions. And, but at the end, we all do want to be respected and we all do want to feel heard. So again, I feel like that's important aspects of having leadership and being mindful of diversity and being inclusive and being equitable. Makes sense. A little while back, you mentioned like a seat at the table and how there's like a difference between just having like a seat there and being able to speak and use your voice. Mm -hmm. Do you think like we need a bigger solution than just like a seat at the table or? Yes. So that's the part with inclusion because you can be included, right? Like, oh, we like included is having a seat at the table, but you know, take it for example, like if you're doing a group project or say like you're working in a table group, you know how sometimes when you're working in a table group of four but maybe there's only two people that are really contributing and then like those other two people may just be kind of like working in the background but like they're still going to get credit on it because they're named in poster or something like that but they're not really contributing so that's just being included because you're there right like i'm here if you want to ask me a question you can and maybe i'll say something but being inclusive is like actively getting feedback from those other two people and having those conversations with those other two people. So inclusive is saying, oh yeah, like, what do you guys think of this? And like asking for their opinions or if they do want to speak up and have an opinion, it's being heard and it's being taken into consideration. So I feel like, did that answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. That was, that was really easy to understand. The analogy definitely helped. Uh, unfortunately, most companies, I guess, right now are dominated by like white men, and some of them might not be willing to implement these DEI initiatives. So how do you think we can get them on board and be willing to implement these DEI things? That's actually a question that comes up a lot with these um, different people that I meet with. And again, it's just about having that open conversation And really, in order to see change, again, it takes time with a lot of this stuff. But I also feel that with sometimes, unfortunately, it's not necessarily about what you know, but sometimes it's about who you know. So I know that a lot of the times with these companies that may mainly be like male dominated, it's just looking at how exactly their hiring process goes about. Because sometimes it's just feeding in from certain colleges 
of where these companies are like getting certain internships from or where they're getting um, certain recommendations from. There's colleges that may have like certain, um, not like deals, but like certain connections with, excuse me, like with colleges. So again, it's just like looking at that. But to really like press on the issue with those certain companies is you can actually go up to someone that you know or like being able to get into contact with that hiring process and asking them like, hey, how are your hiring processes? Or okay, well, with this, like what could I maybe potentially do differently? So really just understanding sometimes what that company is looking for. And if they don't have like a straightforward answer for it, then sometimes like it's just, and also we were thinking a lot of people when they when they're told to implement dei initiatives that they are like it's they're saying it's biased or it's not choosing like the best person for the job but what is an argument against that or what what are what is the argument against that? I would say each company is different. Like I said in the beginning, you know, not every company is going to need the same thing. But again, that's where you bring in like a DEI consultant or specialist. And that's where you get into going surveys within your companies, figure out what exactly those employees feel that they're lacking. And from there, how are you going to change the narrative or how are you going to meet them to what that company specifically needs? Like, there's some who may say, like, yes, we feel diverse, but at the same time, we feel that just with the environment of the company, we don't really feel very inclusive. So then you go to, okay, well, how can we make the environment more inclusive? And sometimes it can just even be as simple as maybe like the design of the office. You know, maybe they need more open spaces, maybe they need more color in the office or something. Like that can also play into the D9 and just making the company, you know, more of a welcome place for those companies. So again, just looking at what that, those specific group of people need in changing for them. Got it. And then lastly, what do you think is the most difficult part of DEI and implementing them? And how do you think we can overcome that challenge so we can see more DEI? I feel like the most difficult challenge sometimes is just getting people to really listen and understand where you're coming from. Because I know that, you know, there's been a lot of change over the past 10 years just with you and I. And I know sometimes people can maybe think that it's sort of redundant or like, okay, we're seeing change. Like, What more can we do? What more can we do? But there's always more we can do. And again, with having those open dialogue conversations and sometimes those uncomfortable yet needed conversations, a lot of the time with DEI, it can just be talk, 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 talk. But then you don't really see a lot of action put behind it. So with that, that's another difficult aspect because you can always talk about what more can be done, but if you're not doing anything, talking kind of is pointless if you're just talking about what more can be done but then not putting really any action steps behind it. So that's why with me personally, I want to go into the organizational management side of it to really understand those sort of key components and disrupt the pattern of why we feel the need to talk about these issues in the first place to get to your point eventually where we feel like we don't need to talk about it anymore because we really do see people not complaining about anything anymore. Do you have any advice or anything like either for us when we have when we are going into college and then business wherever that is or like for women who are already in business but they're trying to get a raise or whatever it is to get higher in the organization or yeah advice I guess would be my last question. <laughs> Well, advice that I would give for y'all is just that y'all are like doing really amazing. Like I looked on the website that you sent me, Leah, and y'all are just, it's amazing how y'all are already doing this. Like y'all are freshmen that are already doing this. Like that's amazing. Like I wish I would have like been able to do this as a freshman. So just like it's inspiring, you know, what y'all are talking about is amazing. Your mission, your vision, truly amazing. And Again, you're just doing something 
that's like good, that's positive advice going into college. I haven't even started college yet. So I have, I have no idea, but I will say that throughout high school, just keep doing what you're doing and, you know, just stay focused and understand that, you know, sometimes like you will have hard days sometimes. I mean, but yeah, you go to MO, you understand like the academic pressure and everything, but like don't sweat it and like don't compare yourself to others. I know I did that a lot throughout my years at MO and especially once I started my college application process, it was really hard for me to not like constantly compare myself to others. Like when they ask me about my stats, ask me about my essays, ask me about certain scores on AP testing, like I kind of did get anxious about it, but uh, like don't mind it, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, Y'all are definitely on the right track. And then I would say like with the advice that you had, that you asked like with women who may like, be wanting to get a raise or something particularly, um, I would say like just don't be afraid to stand up or like confide in someone and just let your voice be heard because talking it out sometimes like can be the best and especially with someone that you trust and, like you can confide in, like, you can always find a solution to something. So I would say like just stay motivated, just stay positive and always know that there's like good things ahead. Well, thank you so much, Raven. This was truly an amazing interview. You made our job easy for us writing this article. <laughs> it's really gonna be easy. Everything was just so well said and I learned a lot. So yeah, thank right. you. Thank you for reaching out. And again, you guys are like truly amazing and like it like just hearing your TED Talk speech, like it was so good. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> It was really good. And it was so great meeting you as well, Dahlia. Thank you. And thanks for speaking with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks. Well, good luck at UNC. Hope to see you in the corporate world. I'm not going to be down if I hear you again. (laughs) Yes, yes. And good luck to you all as well throughout the rest of your years of high school. I know you all are going to rock it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.